Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, we want to show you guys something that's not too common here in California. It's a building, of course it's a commercial building, and it's built with cinder block walls. You can call them concrete block walls, cinder block, CMU. Uh, but it's built with the cinder block, and they install the window. Now how to do that is another topic. But what they did is they put an inch of stucco onto the cinder block. And that's done in many, many other countries, but not too much here. Not anymore because of earthquakes and stuff like that. This one right here, they, they installed the windows. Then they put, they gave me, fortunately, some wood right here. And what we did is we uh, reflashed over the area. We put a piece of wire here and all I did was use a corner wire and opened it up put it here and that'll give me something to grip on around the perimeter especially here where I have four inches weldcrete uh, a bonding agent doesn't have to be weldcrete any bonding agent so that the new stucco will adhere to this concrete right here all this has uh, a bonding agent on it and the, even this smooth stuff has a bonding agent the wire is just to hold it as a precaution because I was using a corner aid here. Now this one's kind of easy to plaster, but I want to go to a more challenging ones to show you guys uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, that one is easy. This one here, um, a little more challenging. You can see where, okay, they have a huge opening here. And then they have the cinder block showing right here. They scratched it, then they browned it. So you can see the scratch marks here, then the, then the brown coat. So what we're going to do is Jay's going to mix me up some hot mud. What is hot mud? That's, uh, that's the stuff. You can get it at Home Depot. You can, it's uh, rapid set uh, stucco. Rapid set stucco sets in about 15 to 20 minutes. And it does have this aggregate right here. Aggregate sand. Another word for sand is aggregate. This is about a 1620. And that's just uh, a deep sand, a heavy sand. Sand with when you float it, you can pull the texture out. So we're going to go ahead and do this window right here. But what I'm going to do is show you how to make corners without corners. All right, guys, I'll show you some tips. Now, Jay got some hot mud for me. That means it's going to set in about 15, 20 minutes. Perfect. Now, this is a two-man job, but just for the sake of having some fun, Jay can video it, and I'm just going to do it myself. Now, one guy generally will hold a rod, a straight edge, a derby, right here. And then you take the mud and you fill that up. You pull it, boom, and you got your sides. And this way, the same, the same thing. But because Jay's holding the camera, I'll just do it myself. And also, too, we have, we have a lot of cement going on this bottom take it out of slope because I don't want the water to set here so I'm gonna be four inches thick here in some of these areas I'm gonna be three inches thick gravity is going to work against us it's gonna want to pull it all off the weld creed, you can see it and it, again guys it doesn't have to be weld creed, uh, shot creed or uh, quick creed it all works quick creed is what they sell at Home Depot for you guys okay so we got some mud that ooh, it's already going stiff so, because it's going stiff already, I'm going to hit the big stuff. And the big stuff is the sides right here. Uh, yeah, this mud is going hard. When they say uh, quick set, they don't say that for, uh, for nothing. It sets quick. And so generally what I'll do is... I'll do all the, the big stuff first so that I see it's already setting. Get rid of all the, the big mud. And if it falls, that's okay because I need it here anyhow. I need it at the bottom. It's probably going to take me 10 minutes to go around this whole perimeter. You guys got something better to do. Uh, <laughs> I suggest you do it. but. Me, I'm having fun now. See, generally, I would go ahead and hit my sides right here, but because this is setting, there is no time for that. I've got to use it up or lose it. Use it or lose it, because again, I got about 15 minutes and we're up on stage, and so Jason had to climb all the way up here. 
the time he climbed all the way up here, he got hard because stucco waits for no man. And fortunately, when the guy installed these windows here, he used, he used a chainsaw to cut through the uh, stuck, the concrete. And no, that's not a regular chainsaw that you cut wood with. It's for cutting stucco. That made a lot of dust, guys. A lot of dust. How much dust did it make? Well, when we got here, I had to break out the shop back in order to get rid of all the dust. Because when we put the um, Weldcrete, Weldcrete again, that's just a, that's a bonding agent that I prefer. When we put that on there, it will not adhere to a dusty surface. So, okay, now what I'm gonna do is the top. And hopefully I have a little bit of cement left to do some of the sides because the cement is hardening. Yeah, they used wood studs inside, which was good. I bid a job. Well, I didn't bid a job. I looked at a job uh, for an auto parts place and he had steel studs. And I said, ah, you got steel studs, so we'll have to use screws in order to put the wire, the stucco netting on. And the fellow said, well, Kirk, uh, I don't care what it looks like. I just want it to last a year. And I thought, you really didn't say that, did you? Uh, he did. He was like, no, I just want it to last a year. And so and then I want to go back to Texas, where I'm from. And the job was in Oakland. I said, man, you know, if I do it, it's going to last forever because this is a building here. If it fails, I get sued. And he wondered why I didn't call him back. I thought, with that attitude, man, there's no way. Uh, anyway, I was just talking because I asked the guy a little while ago, you got wood or steel studs? Because I had to know what to put the... Uh, fasten the metal on so I'm going around the perimeter I got maybe another hawk left and this around the perimeter that's what you got to do uh, again I'm gonna put a slope on here now that I got the perimeter done uh, oh I think I got two more scoops in here uh, if I'm lucky now, this right here, I'm gonna be defying gravity and actually going the opposite direction. So, I'm gonna hit it, boom, and then pull it upward. Can it fall? Absolutely. I'm gonna hit these the same way. Now, if I had another guy holding a uh, derby here or a straight edge, it'd be a little bit easier, but I like the challenge. Okay. And take it up. And then I could use the Darby to check it all as far as, or the rod if it's true and level. Now here, this is a big gap here, so I want to pop it on there. I want to pop it on. And if it doesn't want to stay popped on, we'll try it again. Get up there. Okay. That's another way to do it. Somebody's committing crimes. Okay, that'll do it there. All right, guys. Jay made me a, some more mud. Half a bucket is about all I need here. Give me a chance to uh, clean up my tools. Okay, now this is, uh, oops, a little soupier. So it's good mud, guys. All right, so now I'm going to hit this, and I'm going against gravity, guys. When you're going against gravity and you're putting some stucco on concrete, it wants to fall almost every single time. So if it does, not a big deal. When you're going against gravity, too, like I'm doing right now, you want sticky mud. What is sticky mud? Use less, use less sand and more cement. Okay, that, if you use too much sand for ceilings, 
they just fall right off guys so uh you gotta you gotta know that okay there's one uh, this is how i get my top pull it and if it falls that's okay it's just falling where i need it right here pull it up tight pull it up tight and again if it falls that's okay i was trying to get two squares with that one stop it kirk okay here pull it here pull it up and lastly this side right here and leave it alone guys leave it alone right here can i mess with it a little bit maybe let's see One more time. Come on now. Okay. Now, now that that's done, that's got to harden a little bit and then it'll stick. I'll show you what I was. This right here, Jay held the, the rod for me and I filled it up and we pulled it. But if I'm going to do it myself, here's what I'll do. First thing is, I'm going to get comfortable. Ah, working in a... Okay. Now... If I hold this guy right here to where I want it, you see, that's a lot of cement to fill. Now, Jay would normally hold this, and when I'm done, he would pull it out. But since he's holding the camera, I'll go ahead and fill it where I need it. Uh, a little bit more right here. Okay, so now I'm going to use the, the uh, rod. Now the rod I wet beforehand because if you try to use a dry rod, good luck. When you pull it away, it'll pull the stucco away. Hey, look, it sticks like magic. How about that? All right, so I'm going to do the top now. I got my knee holding it, guys. Okay, now here's the part that is quite simple. You take your heel. Why the, the toe is the top, the heel is the bottom? Why do that? Because now I'm going to make it true and plumb. I'm going to just take this, lay it flat, and pull it up. I'm going to take this, throw it back in the bucket. All right, so this will give me a straight corner. And... Well, I'm just going to hold it with my hand and walk up. Come on up here. Come on up. Beautiful. Okay, now when I remove this rod, you think it'll stay? Sure it will. Okay, now if I take this and pull it this way, the whole thing comes off naturally. What I do is I hold it and go upwards and backwards. Magic. Now... That corner is true and plumb. Uh, from, from right here, it's about an inch and a half. Over here is an inch and a half. Now I'm going to do the bottom. I got this side over here to still do. Now this side is, a, is very full. Very full right here. I need three inches, and that is a lot to adhere. Beautiful. Okay. Let's try that again, guys. Oh, doesn't fit. Let's see if this guy fits. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to hold this here. The only problem with that is I could only go up just a hair and pull it off. I got another half inch. You got to keep going upward, otherwise it falls off. I'm surprised that stayed on. 
Now I'm going to hit it this way again because I have my corner where I want it. And the same thing applies. I'm going to take the heel and then I'm looking at it. Okay, so I'm two uh, inch and a half here. Now I want an inch and a half here. And so I take the heel and just pull it straight up. Or oh, actually, I'm on my toe. Get off of there. Okay. Now I'm going to go do the other one because this got to set for a while. Once this one sets, then I'll come back to you and show you how we float it. Okay guys, what we did is we gave this a little bit of time to set. We did that window there and plastered it because it too has to set. Now here's, here's the important part guys. Okay, you got all your stucco done. Now you got to match the transition. That's, that's the difficult part for most people. And you can see why I let that set a little bit, but nothing I can't handle. We have to let it set, otherwise the gravity will pull it straight down. And so what I'm doing is using a lot of water, guys. A lot of water to bring out the aggregate. Okay, so I bring out the sand. In the areas where it's uh, set, I just have to use more water. Uh, I see some areas are set and some... Uh, some are still trying to set because we use two separate buckets. And on the sides here, you can't see this with the camera, but you'll see it when I do the other side. All I'm doing is just going straight up and floating it. This is a sand finish. You use a green or a yellow float to give a sand finish. And sometimes it's called float finish because you use a float to bring out the sand Okay, so now I'm going to do this part. Now this part's kind of tricky, guys, because what could happen is the water could drop it down. We're working with gravity now. So if it falls, what happens? You just put it back up, guys, because you're working with gravity and it does have a tendency to want to fall. So I, what, I, what I do is I know how much water is in this float because I'm using it. And I want to go ahead and use the rest of the water out of the float until it's very dry and when it's very dry it has a tendency to leave a nasty texture so it's about drying right now so I'm dipping it back in the water because I don't want to leave a nasty texture I want to leave the same texture they have so pop 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 okay now I'm going to pull this and bring out the aggregate underneath here bring out the sand okay now this is delicate here guys because it can fall but if it falls out, all I'm going to do is leave it and finish out of the window and come back to it. This part here is what I was referring to over there. Same thing. We're going to make, you want to go straight up, guys. What happens if you go straight or like down like I'm doing right now? You better go gentle because if you pull down, the whole corner comes down because this is a corner that's made. Handmade, it doesn't have the corner aid. And by the way, guys, the uh, block that was covered with the two coats of stucco did not have any sand or uh, wire. There is no stucco netting because it's not necessary. So um, what I'm doing now is just some final touches, final touches, guys, to, to make sure I match this finish here. If you guys ever need this stuff done, where you know the average person is not going to be able to uh, uh, do well this kind of stucco, or even cut through concrete, you need a concrete saw. Uh, and those are just like chainsaws. Oh, that's going to drop down. Oh well, I'm going to come back to this. Watch this. I touch it, and I can see it's going to drop. But that's okay. Get back up there. And what I'm that's going to drop. Yeah, it's going to drop. I'm going to come back anyhow because i got to come back and do that other side. Important thing is you match the texture. Match the texture. Here we go. And again, the, the guy who did all this right here is Tom Carroll. Carroll Construction. He's in Alameda. So if you guys ever need it done, Google Tom Carroll and you'll see how it's done. Okay, guys. There we have it. That's stucco over 
cinder block to fill in a concrete wall. Here's a question for you guys because we're kind of worldwide and we do a lot of videos like about 800, 900 and we have like 30, 50 million views. What country are we at in? Because a lot of people always ask. I give you a clue. It's a post office over here, the Italiano flag and one of my favorite restaurants. Where are we located, guys? Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. We thank you folks for watching and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.